As you know, there are many different kinds of centers in a triangle. This video is going to address the in-center. The in-center is the point of concurrency of the three angle bisectors. In other words, if we were to construct the lines that bisect each one of the angles of the triangle, so in other words, this line here is cutting this angle perfectly in half, and we'll prove that in a second, we were to construct each one of these lines, and you can imagine when you're really constructing it, that line is extending well past the triangle. But you would find that they all intersect at one point. And that's what it means to be concurrent. It's when three or more line segments or rays all intersect at one point. And this point, in this case, is called the in-center. And it'll become clear later why we use this particular name for this type of center. So again, just to prove this to you, this line does actually cut this angle in half, which makes it the angle bisector. And let's move this triangle around just to show that even when we're talking about an obtuse triangle, or when we're talking about an acute triangle, or if we're really perfect here, which I'm not going to be, but I can be pretty perfect, that's almost a right triangle. No matter what, the in-center is always inside of the triangle, which is nice because it's always nice when things make sense. It's always inside, so therefore the word in or the prefix in makes sense. All right, what are some of the properties of the in-center? So first of all, always inside of the triangle, always the point of concurrency of the angle bisectors, and then another interesting property is that if we find the distance between the in-center and each one of the sides of the triangles, and remember, when we say distance, we mean shortest distance. We also mean that that short distance is going to be the line segment that connects the point and the side, and it has to be perpendicular. We've already dealt with that. So we know that the shortest distance is always the perpendicular line segment. Well, what's the relationship between each one of these line segments? If we measure them, we see that each one of these line segments is the same length. In other words, D, the in-center, is equidistant from each one of the sides. And again, no matter what we do to this triangle, you can see that the distances remain equal to each other. In other words, the in-center is always equidistant to the sides. So, the last interesting little fact about our in-center is that if this point is equidistant from each one of the sides, we can treat these little line segments as radii of a circle. Because as we know, a circle represents all points equidistant from a center point, which would be D. So D also happens to be the point that is the center of the circle that can be inscribed in the triangle. And inscribed basically means that the circle is going to touch each one of the three sides and it's going to remain inside of the triangle. So that's why it's called the in-center, is because it's the center of the circle that can be inscribed in the triangle. So to recap, the in-center of the triangle is the point of concurrency of the angle bisectors of the triangle. It is always inside of the triangle, regardless of if it's obtuse, acute, or a right triangle. It is equidistant from the sides of the triangle, which makes it the center point of the circle that can be inscribed in the triangle.